Hello everyone, I greet you in the name of God Almighty. My name is Apostle Nathan Silas and today we have a very interesting video to react to. As a matter of fact, I made a video about um, Khalid Yassin having a heated debate with a pastor concerning the birth of um, Jesus Christ, which Khalid Yassin says that um, Mary cannot be a mother of God at the same time being a daughter of God, making reference to the birth of Jesus. And of course, at the comment session, of course, um, people you are saying that Khalid Yassin could not answer the questions of his fellow and have a poor understanding of what he is saying. And then someone you understand, responded that I had him answer the question, are you serious? And then from there, he went to drop this very link at the comment. Um, session to prove his point and then therefore we are going to check out in you know, the video in which you know, he sent at the comment session to be able to answer the question that the young man feel that Khalid is in you know, answer concerning the birth of Jesus so let's get down to the video and then let's check this out and then probably we can say something concerning it all right so let's check this out peace and blessings be upon you welcome to this video where we take a journey through history to explore the words of some of the most influential figures about one of the greatest men in history, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Across time and cultures, Prophet Muhammad has been admired not only by his followers but by people of diverse backgrounds, religions, and nationalities. Let's hear what these renowned individuals have said about him. Before we dive into the reflections of what the great historical figures have said about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, let us first hear what Allah says about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the Holy Quran. Quran Chapter 21 Ayah 107 We have not sent you, O Muhammad, except as a mercy to the worlds. Quran Chapter 33 Ayah 21 Verily in the Messenger of Allah you have a good example for him who looketh unto Allah and the last day, and remembereth Allah much. Quran Chapter 68 Ayah 4 and indeed, you are of a great moral character. Michael H. Hart, author. Michael Hart spent 28 years researching before publishing his book, The 100, a ranking of the most influential persons in history in 1978. He ranked Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him as the most influential person due to his unique role as both a religious and political leader, founding Islam and shaping its growth. Michael Hart highlighted Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him direct influence on the religion's formation, the unification of the Arabian Peninsula, and the rapid spread of Islam. His choice was based on the Prophet's enduring global legacy and profound impact on both spiritual and secular realms. Michael Hart said, My choice of Muhammad to lead the list of the world's most influential persons may surprise some readers and may be questioned by others but he was the only man in history who was supremely successful on both the religious and secular level. Mahatma Gandhi, Indian leader and social reformer. I wanted to know the best of the life of one who holds today an undisputed sway over the hearts of millions of mankind when I closed the second volume of the Prophet's biography, I was sorry there was not more for me to read of that great life. It is my conviction that the Prophet Muhammad's message was not confined to his own people and time. It is a message that has a universal appeal and application. The sayings of Prophet Muhammad are a treasure of wisdom not only for Muslims but for all of mankind. I became more than ever convinced that it was not the sword that won a place for Islam in those days in the scheme of life. It was the rigid simplicity, the utter self-effacement of the Prophet, the scrupulous regard for his pledges, his intense devotion to his friends and followers, his intrepidity, his fearlessness, his absolute trust in God and in his own mission. These, and not the sword, carried everything before them and surmounted every obstacle. Thomas Carlyle, Scottish philosopher, satirical writer, essayist, historian, and teacher. Thomas said, how one man single-handedly could weld warring tribes and wandering Bedouins into a most powerful and civilized nation in less than two decades. The lies Western slander which well-meaning zeal has heaped round this man Muhammad are disgraceful to ourselves only. A silent great soul, one of that who cannot but be earnest. He was to kindle the world, the world's maker had ordered so. Annie Bizant, British writer, theosophist, social reformer and campaigner for Indian nationalism. 
Annie Bizant said. It is impossible for anyone who studies the life and character of the great prophet of Arabia, who knows how he taught and how he lived, to feel anything but reverence for that mighty prophet, one of the great messengers of the Supreme. Alphonse de Lamartine, French writer, poet, and politician. Alphonse said. If greatness of purpose, smallness of means, and astounding results are the three criteria of human genius, who could dare to compare any great man in modern history with Muhammad? Karen Armstrong, British author and religious historian. Karen said, Muhammad was a man who stood for social justice, for women's rights, for the poor, and for the dispossessed. At a time when Christians were debating whether women had souls, Muhammad was ensuring that women had rights within marriage, including the right to sexual satisfaction, that they could inherit property and initiate divorce. He condemned the practice of female infanticide, common among the Arabs, and was scrupulous in the care he took of his own daughters. Reverend Bosworth Smith, late fellow of Trinity College, Oxford. Bosworth Smith said, He was Caesar and Pope in one, but he was Pope without the Pope's pretensions Caesar, without the legions of Caesar, without a standing army, without a bodyguard, without a palace, without a fixed revenue, if ever any man had the right to say that he ruled by a right divine, it was Mohammed, for he had all the power without its instruments and without its supports. Edward Gibbon, English historian and author. Edward Gibbon said, The greatest success of Mohammed's life was affected by sheer moral force without the stroke of a sword. Montgomery Watt, Scottish historian and professor of Arabic and Islamic studies. Montgomery said, His readiness to undergo persecutions for his beliefs, the high moral character of the men who believed in him and looked up to him as leader, and the greatness of his ultimate achievement, all argue his fundamental integrity. His greatness as a religious leader was that he combined religion with social reform, created a new community based on human brotherhood, and united diverse peoples in a common faith. Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, German poet, playwright, and novelist. Johann said, he is a prophet and not a poet and therefore his Quran is to be seen as divine law and not as a book of a human being made for education or entertainment. Leo Tolstoy, Russian author and philosopher. Tolstoy said, Muhammad has always been standing higher than the Christianity. He does not consider God as a human being and never makes himself equal to God. Muslims worship nothing except God and Muhammad is his messenger. There is no any mystery and secret in it. Muhammad is the founder of the greatest religion of all time. His teachings are simple and practical, and people all over the world have accepted them with an open heart. The legislation of Muhammad will spread all over the world because it agrees with reason and wisdom. Muhammad's religion is a true religion of reason and wisdom, just like his doctrine of simplicity and selflessness which can bring peace to the human soul. John William Draper, American scientist, philosopher, and historian. John William said. For years after the death of Justinian, AD 569, was born at Mecca, in Arabia, the man who, of all men, has exercised the greatest influence upon the human race. Jules Masserman, American psychiatrist and professor of the Chicago Institute of Psychoanalysis. Jules Masserman said. Leaders must fulfill three functions, provide for the well-being of the led, provide a social organization in which people feel relatively secure, and provide them with one set of beliefs. Perhaps the greatest leader of all times was Muhammad, who combined all three functions. To a lesser degree, Moses did the same. Sarojini Naidu, Indian independence activist and poet. It was the first religion that preached and practiced democracy, for, in the mosque, when the call for prayer is sounded and worshippers are gathered together, the democracy of Islam is embodied five times a day when the peasant and king kneel side by side and proclaim, God alone is great. Nelson Mandela, South African anti-apartheid revolutionary and former president. Nelson Mandela said, The Prophet Muhammad's life is an inspiration to those who are struggling for freedom and human rights. His teachings and actions have helped people rise above oppression, injustice, and inequality. Islam has been an active partner in the struggle against racism and oppression. The Prophet Muhammad set an example for the world of how to stand against tyranny and injustice, something we, too, 
strive to achieve in South Africa. Washington Irving, American author and historian. Irving said, He was sober and abstemious in his diet and a rigorous observer of fasts. He indulged in no magnificence of apparel, the ostentation of a petty mind, neither was his simplicity in dress affected, but the result of a real disregard for distinction from so trivial a source. In his private dealings, he was just. He treated friends and strangers, the rich and the poor, the powerful and the weak, with equity, and was beloved by the common people for the affability with which he received them. K. S. Ramankrishna Rao, Indian Professor of Philosophy Rao said, The personality of Muhammad, it is most difficult to get into the whole truth of it, only a glimpse of it I can catch. What a dramatic succession of picturesque scenes. There is Muhammad, the Prophet. There is Muhammad, the warrior. Muhammad, the businessman, Muhammad, the statesman, Muhammad, the orator, Muhammad, the reformer, Muhammad, the refuge of orphans, Muhammad, the protector of slaves, Muhammad, the emancipator of women, Muhammad, the judge, Muhammad, the saint. George Bernard Shaw, the Irish playwright, critic, and polemicist. Bernard Shaw said, I have studied him, the wonderful man, and in my opinion far from being an antichrist, he must be called the savior of humanity. Mahatma Gandhi, Indian leader and social reformer. Gandhi said, The Prophet's name, peace be upon him, has to this day a wonderful hold over the hearts of millions of mankind. It is perhaps the most fascinating force on the earth. The Prophet was a great military genius, but he had the heart of a saint. His was not the sword of a conqueror, but the sword of a crusader for the truth. The more I study the more I discover that the strength of Islam does not lie in the sword, but in the indomitable spirit and the high moral qualities of the Prophet. I have studied the life of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him to the best of my ability and I find that he was the one who taught mankind the way of equality, brotherhood, and peace. Through his actions, he provided a model for all humanity. As we've seen, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him has left an indelible mark on history, and his life and message continue to inspire millions across the globe. These testimonies from some of the world's most influential thinkers and leaders are a reminder of his profound impact not just as a religious figure but as a man of moral integrity, justice, and leadership. Whether it is his message of peace, his call for unity, or his emphasis on compassion, Prophet Muhammad's legacy remains as relevant today as it was centuries ago. Thank you for watching. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe for more content. Why do you say that the, the church says that God impregnated a woman? That is not what the church believes. Well, to be honest with you, uh, what the church believes and what the church says, they said 354 years after Jesus Christ. So I don't think that 354 years after Jesus Christ, whatever the church came up with at the Council of Ephesus or the Council of Nicaea, I don't think it holds any legitimacy when we connect it to the 19 statements that I could quote to you about who Jesus said that he is. Excuse me? Well, why don't you read it for us? Come, 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 come over here. I'm sorry about this, but... No, no, sorry, I, just, just, okay. uh, uh, I said, question. why do you say that the church says that God impregnated a woman, and the word I'm saying is impregnated, that is not what Christians, the church believes. Christians believe that Mary, as a virgin, not impregnated by anyone, therefore, Mary, as a virgin, empowered by God, gave birth to Jesus. I'm not talking about whether Jesus is God or anything else like that. What I'm talking about is, why do you make the accusation that Mary was, why do you say that Christians say Mary was impregnated by God when we say something different? All I'm asking you is to represent Christians and their beliefs fairly. Now, if you've done it out of not knowing, I don't mind. But Christians don't believe that God impregnated Mary. They believe that God empowered Mary to give birth to a child. Which is, I think, what you believe. You don't. Well, 
Don't, don't ask me what I believe. I'm going to state it's, your question, and then I'm going to answer you. What okay. I'd like you to do is, you might have a little follow-up, so why don't you sit right there while I answer. Okay. Now, since you have opened up this can of worms, we're going to talk about it. Okay. Now, the, the concept that the church does say about Mary is that Mary is the mother of God. Yes. Yes. And as such, they also believe that Mary is also the daughter of God. In another sense, yes. In another sense. And also that Jesus, I mean that Mary, that she is also the immaculate. That is, what does immaculate mean? Without sin. Without sin. That means like a human being that is perfect. Yes. Good. So as the mother of God, she's the mother of God, that is the mother of Jesus, and she's also the daughter of God because Jesus is also God. Yes, and I will want to try. Look, I will want to chance to answer all this later. Just, yes. Well, just a moment. Just, I'm answering. We'll answer the question. Yeah, okay. Now, I never said that the church said that Mary was impregnated by God. I didn't say that. You used the word impregnated. Well, well, but that's not what I said. You used the word impregnated. Well, let me just cl clarify for you that it is not my understanding as a Christian, previously a Christian, that your belief is that God impregnated Mary. No, what we say, what we understand, which is a different understanding that you have, is that Mary was impregnated by the Word of God. That the Word of God was placed inside Mary and she became pregnant. Okay? Now, okay. now, what, now what, we have, what we have a problem with, Reverend, what we have a problem with is this paganistic concept that God has a mother and God got a daughter. Now that means God is locked in on both sides by Mary. God is, Mary is God's mother on one hand, and then she's God's daughter on the other hand. Now that's a problem with anybody. Now that seems to be some incestuous relationship there. Can, can, can I respond but, now? Can I respond? Well, listen, let, let me say this to you. If you were sort of like, um, if you were sort of ir ir irritated by me, by your thinking that I said that Mary is impregnated by God, I take that away. And so, uh, th so you, you have that. But you yourself said to everybody here that Mary is considered to be the mother of God and also the daughter of God. We say we reject that. Now, you can rent your own hall and give your own speech, and then I'll ask questions to you at another time. Uh, can, I, can I just say, okay. Because well, there's more questions okay, here. Okay, yeah, all that is, I simply wanted you to clear the allegation that okay. God impregnated Mary. Okay. You have done that, and okay. I would agree that Thank the you. question about how Mary's mother is God another time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, we, we want to thank, um, thank our friend. And, uh, and no aspersion meant to the Catholic Church at all, just a matter of concepts. Thank you very much. Well, that's a very interesting um, video listening to this. But then you can be here with me that, of course, um, we have listened to a couple of um, people that was mentioned you know, in the video talking about you know, the great mind and then talking about the character of who Prophet um, Muhammad you know, was. And of course, some couple of people you know, states their opinion. We could talk about um, Mahatma Gandhi, Michael Hart, Karen Armstrong, Johan, Leo, Drapa, John, Nayadu, Nelson Mandela, Rayo, George, Bernard, of course, all of them say one thing about um, Prophet Muhammad, and that is about his greatness and influence to humanity. That is just, you understand, the common message that all of them are talking about. But how does this video, you understand, explain Jesus' um, divinity in making reference to what um, Khalid Yassin said, you understand, in the video before this video was sent to me as an answer to what um, Khalid Yassin says that Mary 
cannot be daughter of God and at the same time being mother of God. And then all this discussion is based on Jesus' um, divinity. Of course, some of you have listened to this video and this does not explain, you understand, Jesus' um, divinity. Of course, no one, you understand, is doubting the prophethood of um, Prophet Muhammad or his influence, you understand, to people. But we are talking about, you understand, Christ. We are talking about God. We are talking about, you understand, his divinity so from watching this of course you all bear with me that this does not you understand answer you understand the question that the priest you understand raised that Khalid Yassin attempted you understand to respond um to it but of course i would still like to hear your thought and opinion at the comment um session and then we will still progress from there so this is the end of my video if you like my reaction should like share and subscribe and if you have any video you want me to react to don't forget to drop it at the comment section and i'm going to check it out so you remember less and i see you in my next video goodbye